start the recording. There we go. Ah, there it is. There's the recording notification. So, hi everybody. My name is Will Jackson. This is Green Screens for Work. So, let's go ahead and get started. As uh, said, my name is Will Jackson. I am a tech lead at Canopy Studios, and I have been working from home for about 10 years. So a little about this presentation, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, chroma screens. Uh, from here on, I'm gonna call them green screens, but uh, it doesn't actually have to be green. It could be any solid color. Uh, green's probably the most common, second most common is blue, um, but um, as long as it's a solid color, but green is more common. And I'm just gonna refer to them as green screens for the rest of the presentation. And how to use one in your home office. Um, and trying to take it to the next level. Uh, so there's a lot of things you can do with this, uh, a lot of custom things you can do with that other than just kind of popping in a background and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so why would, we, why would we want to use a green screen? Uh, one, I think it definitely improves your remote working experience. Uh, it's a lot of fun just to, we're working for, you know, a lot of us are, are new to working for remote um, or if we have been doing it for a long time, you know, throwing in something new, some new hardware uh, for your video conferencing um, can definitely can definitely make you stand out. Uh, also, I think it overall uh, has a great work experience or has a great um, benefit to uh, improving the work experience um, just with your calls, uh, you know, being able to and some of the things that go with that too, so like cameras, lighting, and, and some of the other hardware that uh, you would typically want to use in kind of a more traditional setup uh, will just overall improve the, the quality of your, your conference calls. Um, another reason, uh, privacy, uh, just being able to hide things behind you, uh, whether it's, um, you know, just to keep things um, kind of private or hidden, uh, or I mean, just for, you know, if you have other people in the background too, um, you know, it could be a way to, um, you know, not have to worry about the clutter and making sure everything in the background is exactly where it needs to be. Um, you know, using a green screen, you can make it look like whatever you want. And it's just fun. I mean, it's a good time. So yeah, uh, green screen support. Uh, so how, where can we use that? Uh, Zoom virtual backgrounds, that's probably the, the most commonly discussed uh, and most popular right now. Uh, Zoom, obviously we're aware of that because we're connected on Zoom call for our Doug group meetings. Um, but it's a very, it's probably, I would, if I had to guess, I don't, I don't know the exact numbers, but probably one of the more popular, if not the most popular uh, video conferencing software uh, on the market today. So it's, it's very, very widely used. Um, but then for uh, other applications, things that uh, might not support uh, green screens natively or chroma key screens natively, uh, there's a virtual webcam uh, so that you could use it for uh, any other conferencing software that you might use that uh, doesn't quite support it out of the box. Uh, so some of the requirements uh, we're gonna talk about. Uh, cameras, uh, it's a, obviously a big deal. Um, Lights, lighting is, is almost as important as the cameras uh, for a good quality uh, green screen. Um, and then obviously the green screen itself. Um, so first we'll talk about cameras. Um, we have a webcam. So most of us have like, you know, a lot of us use laptops uh, with a built-in webcam. Uh, but we'll also wanna talk about external webcams. Uh, the built-in webcams, they do an okay job um, to some degree, but they're, they're very small sensors. Uh, they're, they're great for just kind of getting your video uh, to a conference call, but uh, as far as uh, really great quality built-in webcams are generally discouraged if you wanna have a really rich green screen background. Um, some options here, uh, there's a Logitech C920 series. There's also like the C922, um, I think there's like 22X. There's a, there's a few different ones of this, this particular series. Uh, it's less than a hundred bucks um, and uh, they're, they're very popular. Um, it's a great webcam. Um, another one that I recommend, actually probably another step up is actually the one I'm using now, uh, is a Logitech Brio. Uh, the differences between these two, um, the C920, that's gonna be a 1080 resolution, whereas the Brio is gonna be a 4K. Um, so it's gonna be a higher resolution. It's also a, a wider field of view. Uh, so you're gonna be able to get more of the background with the uh, Logitech Brio than something like the, the C920. Um, and also the Brio works, uh, has a little bit bigger sensor, uh, so it works a bit better in low light situations. So if your lighting is not, um, you know, full professional setup or anything like that, you know, it, it does give you a little bit more uh, wiggle room as far as, um, I guess the placement and the intensity of the lights needed. 
um, outside of webcams. <clears throat> you can also use a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Um, and that's totally possible too. Uh, some cameras like uh, Canon actually just released a um, update uh, for, um, I think it's a firmware update, uh, but essentially lets you use uh, any Canon camera. And it's, it goes a ways back. I want to say it goes far back as like the 60D, which is, uh, has got some years on it. I mean, it's, can't remember exactly when it came out, but with, you know, within the past 10 years. Uh, so it goes back pretty far. Uh, there's a full list on our website, but uh, with Canon cameras, you can actually pop those right into your uh, computer now with this beta software and actually use it as a webcam without any external hardware, uh, which is really cool. But if you're not using Canon, say if you're like Aaron and using a Nikon or, um, you know, somebody else that might, or some other camera that you may have, um, there is a piece of hardware called uh, the Cam Link. It's from a company called Elgato. Um, there's also another version of it from Blackmagic and a, and a few other, um, uh, a few other uh, manufacturers that make similar pieces. But uh, essentially what this does is it has an HDMI input and it outputs that. You know, you pop it into your USB and then it will, um, essentially show up as a webcam on uh, any camera um, feed that you have coming from that will show up in your webcam. So uh, it's a really great way to have a really high quality webcam and, and use, or I'm sorry, a, a camera that acts like a webcam. Um, but the cool thing about using a DSLR or like a mirrorless camera is that the sensors are much, much larger. Um, so it's going to work even better in low light situations. Um, and you know, a lot of these cameras, you know, you can have uh, additional lenses that you can add to that. So if you want to get something that has uh, like a really cool bokeh effect, you can do that too. But if you're using a green screen, you probably won't want to do that um, anyway, because it might kind of throw it off a little bit. But um, the quality of the DSLR mirror mirrorless cameras are going to uh, far surpass any of the webcams and kind of out of the box uh, cameras that you would get. Uh, the next we're gonna talk about lighting. Uh, so lighting as mentioned is almost as important as the camera itself. Um, Three point lighting is, is what you would want to have. Now, not everybody has uh, fill lights, key lights, and backlights, or even places to put them. Um, but this is something that you definitely want to um, kind of keep in mind when you're, when you're wanting to use a green screen. Because what the overall goal is to do is just to reduce as much shadow, or as many shadows as you can. Uh, you want to you know, in this case, you have uh, a key light, which is your primary light, and then your fill light, which, you know, lights you on two sides. Uh, then you have a backlight that's typically above and behind you. Um, and what that'll do is the shadow that those front two lights are casting behind you, uh, the backlight will reduce that too. And what that, what, how that helps your, your green screen is that uh, things like the edges of like, in this case, my chair, um, you know, those, aren't as jagged or don't appear to be as jagged. Uh, and it's gonna be more smooth. So um, lighting is, is very important for that. Um, and as mentioned too, larger sensors, you know, work better for low light situations. So I mean, something like a, a built-in webcam, you're gonna need a lot of lighting to, to actually use that, um, you know, to its full extent. Um, an external webcam, something like a C920 or a Brio, uh, it's definitely better than an integrated camera, but, um, you the larger the larger the sensor the the better it will or the more light it'll pick up so you'll be able to distinguish the blacks and um, you know a lot more precision so uh, and then just the green screen there's a lot of different types um, probably the the one I would recommend the most would probably be a portable or, or something that uh, has a stand um, just because you don't always like if you're not using it you don't need it you can you know you know uh, break it down, put it away, store it. Um, and it's something that uh, you don't necessarily need up all the, all the time. Uh, if a green screen is something you just wanna play around with every, every once in a while, they have these chair mounted setups that you can get and it just kind of fold or clips into or attaches to the back of your chair and uh, gives you a little silhouette. So those are uh, some inexpensive uh, options. Um, and then there's the, uh, the kind of DIY approach where you can build your own. And this is a um, this is a, a picture of the, the room that I'm in now. And uh, what I have here is just uh, some internet green is what Joann's calls it. And uh, but uh, you pretty much go to any fabric store and, and find this uh, chroma green. Um, it's very common. And I'm using uh, office partitions, so I just had some. Um, kind of left over from a, a old computer shop that I used to run. And um, 
wasn't really using them for anything and it worked great uh, for just fixing it. And, uh, you know, a nice benefit about that too is that it's always set up, it's always ready to go. Um, and then having something like, you know, in this case, the Logitech Brio camera, uh, it's, it's just a normal webcam. So that's as well, always ready to go. I don't have to worry about uh, setting up a DSLR camera or anything like that. It's just, it's always there. Um, and it lets me kind of dial my lighting in right. And my lighting could definitely use some uh, improvements. I'm not using a traditional three light setup. I have like a floor lamp and like a desk lamp on one side. And that's pretty much it. I'm not doing anything crazy. Uh, but the DIY approach will probably be the most cost efficient uh, way to do that and um, give you the best results too, because you can spend time really kind of getting out those, you know, stretching out the fabric, making it as flat as you possibly can, and just you know, trying to reduce the, uh, the overall amount of shadows that are being cast on the background. Uh, so now we're going to talk about integrations. Uh, so as mentioned, there's native support with Zoom uh, through virtual backgrounds. Um, you probably mostly have seen this. Um, we have, uh, I don't know if you're able to see my, my mouse cursor, uh, but there is, um, you have a virtual background with Zoom uh, and you have this also option that you say you have a green screen. If you don't check that, it will still work. Uh, what it will do is it will just take uh, anything in the background that has not moved and just it'll key it out uh, and remove that. But um, it's tricky to do sometimes, you know, if somebody walks through the background and can kind of break that immersion or, um, or even just some slight movements can cause uh, that whole thing to fall apart. Uh, they do have this option. I have a green screen. If you check that, uh, it gives you a, a, um, an eyedrop selector to select the color uh, from your camera uh, that is the green or blue or you know, whatever color your green screen or your, your chroma screen is. Uh, in my case, it was green. So I just select that. And, uh, it works really good. Um, actually, I, th I feel like the zoom uh, keying out um, kind of out of the box settings work fantastic uh, with the green screen. Um, and another, but another option, and actually what I'm comparing that to is uh, Open Broadcaster Studio, OBS. Um, it's very popular in the gaming world if you're streaming video games, but it uh, also has a lot of really cool features too. I mean, as far as just, uh, uh, it's probably the best, I think, screen recorder that there is. Um, it's very intuitive to use. You can also uh, create scenes, I don't know if you're able to see this on the left side of the uh, screenshot here. Um, but you can have different scenes that you would have, which essentially would be uh, different backgrounds. You can have your camera in different positions. You could, you know, put a desktop image there. So, um, you know, there's a lot of flexibility uh, with this program and uh, it's pretty easy to use too. Um, and it also has a lot of other third-party integrations too. So OBS is uh, kind of the advanced um, way to take it to the next level uh, if you really want to um, kind of extend out what, what you're, uh, what's your background or backgrounds or um, everything that's doing. Um, I'm kind of talking about OBS, uh, so it's flexible. Uh, it does it, it does have Mac support. Uh, it, well, OBS, it, you can download that for Mac. That works out of the box of Mac. Uh, but in order to use the virtual webcam, uh, there's a, another program called Camera Twist, um, which is needed in order to, uh, is that actually Camera Twist? And there is, um, I forget, but there's, there's a, um, with Catal with I think with Catalina, there was, I forget the, something security layer, but it's a pretty insecure way that you have to, um, there's a setting that you have to disable uh, in order for camera twist to work, but uh, it, it does work and it actually works pretty pretty good once uh, you kind of get past that point. Um, Stinger transitions, this was something I started to mention on this last slide, but uh, Stinger transitions is a way that you can go from one scene to another scene, but in between those two scenes, you can have a video. Um, so you could have, um, you know, in this case, if I, you know, I'm in my virtual apartment. If I wanted to go around this this wall that's over here and show you the, the kitchenette, you know, I could do that um, via Stinger transition. It's basically a video that kind of sits in between two scenes. Um, it's really cool. But then, uh, in order to use that really effectively, um, you don't have to have this, but uh, it's it's definitely recommended. There's the Elgato Stream Deck. Uh, Elgato they make they make a lot of um, I guess live streaming sort of hardware for like gamers, but there's a, there's uh, I mean it's essentially just a Mac programmable uh, macro board that you can do a lot of things with. Um, so it's it's a lot of fun and really cool uh, toy uh, to to play around with on um, 
uh, backgrounds and everything. Uh, but this is the you know, the stream deck is what you would use in order to uh, very easily kind of transition between different scenes and backgrounds without having to uh, you know open up the program and manually select go into them. And the other thing too uh, is you want to select the right background. Um, just kind of showing you my background here. Uh, this is my virtual apartment. You know, I've got a couch back there that I cannot sit in. Um, as mentioned, I do work for Canopy, so I have our Canopy logo. Uh, there's a beautiful picture of my wife, um, and I am in Ireland, and a picture of my son, and then I have a team photo, uh, which is probably hard to see, but it's a team photo uh, from our company retreat uh, last year. Um, so this one's kind of a generic background, you know, I use it for uh, all of my conference calls, all of my work-related calls. It's, uh, I built it in Unreal Studio. I just exported a screenshot. Uh, so there's nothing really fancy there with that. I mean, I bought this entire office off of uh, uh, the Epic Store on Black Friday sale for $3. And, you know, Unreal is a free program. You can fire it up and, um, yeah, start editing away. And that's essentially what I did. I mean, it's, I mean, it took me 20 minutes to build. And it was, it was a lot of fun doing it, too. Um, but, yeah, be mindful of your audience. Uh, so this is kind of a very... Uh, generic background. I don't have a lot of, you know, things back there, but um, you could have fun with it, you know, for people's birthday parties at, at Canopy, we like to sing uh, birthday, happy birthday to the people on her birthday. And I like to do some decorations back there occasionally. And like, um, I'm always keeping my eye on the Epic store for any, any new sale, hot sales that they have going on. Um, you can be creative. You know, there's, there's a lot of ways you can have fun with this. Um, mostly just to you know, just have fun. I mean, videos is, is another great way to um, kind of spice things up a little bit, but yeah, it's yeah. Um, kind of a short presentation, but does anybody have any questions? I know you've talked before about like your plans on being able to give like a tour of the apartment. So like, can you, can you talk more about that? Like, would you be doing that with just like the stinger transitions or is there like a different way that you would be going through that? Yeah. Uh, the stinger transitions is probably the easiest way to accomplish that. And essentially what um, what would happen actually, I'll go back to the slide here. So this is OBS and, um, are you able to see my my cursor and all my mouse yeah, cursor? Yeah, we can. Okay, okay. So um, on the scenes here on the left, uh, we have we have a few of them here. I have modern kitchen camera off. So uh, this was a fun one to do. Like, um, it's like you turn your video off and zoom. It just has like your picture there. Uh, I copied that, so the camera is actually on, but the picture is just, um, you know, it's it's just there. And the fun thing about that is because you can. You know, it's all controllable from the stream deck, you know, from this little panel that I have uh, kind of above my keyboard. And um, you, know, you can do like a fade, a bunch of other stuff too, but kind of having it all integrated, it's nice. And it's one place to kind of manage everything. Um, yeah, with Stinger Transitions, the idea, at least with the virtual apartment, was just to export uh, two different screenshots uh, from two different parts of this virtual apartment. So this, this view that we're looking at here, which is, you know, there's this, you know, nice window that, you can see some people out there with and um you know this it's kind of a basic background but then uh kind of around the corner you know we've got um there's like a kitchenette can't see it you have to believe me you have to trust me there's a kitchenette back there um there's also this weird black box that i'm not exactly sure what it is i think i corrupted something and i'm gonna save one so i quite figured that one out but um but yeah, so a stinger transition with an OBS is a very easy way to achieve that. Uh, you would just essentially have two static backgrounds and then in Unreal, uh, you would just export a video of going from one position to the other. Um, and then it's just like, you know, think of it like almost making a movie um, because you have a cameras and you have rails and trains and it sits on, you know, sits on the rail and the camera moves. And uh, you would just record that video, export that uh, to a video and that would be the stinger transition. So you would go from static background, fade into the, the actual, um, traversing the, the apartment and then ending up in the spot that would eventually be the back, the second background. Um, 
and you can set different transitions too. So like if I'm coming from this scene and going to this scene specifically, like for each of those two scenes, it has this one transition. Um, and then depending on how many scenes you have, uh, you could have different transitions. So the idea would be if, say, if you have three different vantage points or three different camera uh, view, views in, the, um, in Unreal, you would just have a transition between all of them, record all of those, and each one would be its own stinger. So that way, if someone's like, I don't believe you, I don't believe that's your apartment, they're like, well, hold on, let's go check out the kitchen. So you can like hit the button and you know, kind of get up and I guess fake walk around to the kitchen and um, yeah, show them that. And then you can hit the button again and go show them the view out the window. Uh, ultimately, I thought it'd be great if I could actually have like a, a full house built so I could actually do that, go from one part of that room to the other. Um, but then if I wanted to go down, pop down to the coffee shop, you know, we could do that too. And we have like a whole, a whole little virtual island uh, to where I could go work remote. But I mean, I'm still in the same place being lazy, but you know, visually I'm, I'm going to different places and um, this would be a fun way to spice things up a little bit. You know, working from home, working remote, um, you know, there isn't a lot of face to face time and you know, it, you kind of rely on these conference calls and, you know, having anything that could, um, you know, increase immersion, actually feel like you're there, you know, actually have uh, more fun with it. I think it's only a good thing. Um, so I think I'm more than answer the question, but, um, oh, that's awesome. yeah, yeah, there, it is unreal. So technically you totally could, um, you know, export it as its own, um, you know, application and, you know, use something like a, like an Xbox controller to kind of walk around. It would be, it would be kind of strange cause you would, you know, I mean, it, it would be like a video game, you know, but, um, so I don't know if the quality would be there, but you could totally do it. Um, and yeah, I mean, you would use OBS, you essentially would screen capture that application. That would be your background. And yeah, then you won't have to worry about tr stinger transitions, just wherever your camera is lined up at, um, which I don't, I don't know how that would help, how that would do with the immersion factor of it. It definitely would be fun. Um, I think if you had like the whole island, like I was talking about, that'd be really cool. Um, cause then you could just like, you know, go through, you know, God mode and clip through the walls and like, just go flying out like over an ocean or something. Uh, I don't, I don't know how professional that would be. So I guess, you know, being mindful of the audience, uh, it's like an internal work call. I would have so much fun with that, but, um, I have had definitely have had the clients be like, is that a great, they, they'll, they'll ask. Um, and I like to try to play it off because it's, it's one of those things that like, it just looks too clean. If you know me, like that's probably not how my office is going to look. There's going to be junk everywhere. Um, and like, like where's the pile of computers? Like that's a thing that I know is in this man's house somewhere. And it's obviously not back there because actually it is back there. It's just behind a green screen. <laughs> so, it's in the um, yeah, yeah. Oh no, that's awesome. That's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to get, I wanted to include more of that in this presentation. Uh, it was just trying, I was loading up unreal, uh, I think Friday or Saturday. It was, it was semi recently and, um, my entire project file was corrupted and I'm not sure what, what happened to it or anything. I said, I had an issue with this weird black mass that was growing in the kitchen back, back over there. Uh, last time I opened uh, and actually got the project to open. So I'm not sure what was going on. It might've been an update with, um, you know, unreal or something along those lines that may have, may have caused that. Uh, but yeah. Maybe next time, maybe if we get that integrated, I do have, I do have definitely have plans to further integrate on that. So yeah, no, I think, I think that would be really awesome to, to see in action. Um, so yeah, I might make a, like a video or something on it. Cause it's something I, I definitely want to do. There's some upgrades I want to make to the, to the room. And um, I want to get more with like, or play around more with like building objects and that sort of thing. Um, Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go ahead and stop the recording then. So the folks have stuff to include.